It's time for Living with Victory, a program of hope and encouragement brought to you by Friends of Compassion and listeners like you. Now here's your host, President of Compassion for Kids, Tony Giorgio, with today's message of perseverance. Welcome to Living with Victory. I'm your host, Tony Giorgio, with my wonderful co-host, Laureen Giorgio. Groving, life isn't about waiting for the storms to pass. I know you've heard it before, but it's true. It's about learning to dance in the rain. It's called perseverance and faith above all in Jesus Christ. And by the way, the opinions expressed on this program are the opinions of the host and hostess, not the organization and not the radio station. Just a reminder, real quick, you can email us your comments We'd love to hear from you or your prayer request, if you have, to livingwithvictory at gmail.com. Again, livingwithvictory at gmail.com. Later on, before we go off the air, please have a paper and pencil ready, and I will give you additional information on how to reach us. By the way, our partners in this is the Journey Christian Newspaper, which is a free monthly print and online publication offering Christian perspective news, Christian events, and encouraging articles. You can visit them online, if you don't have it in your neighborhood, at www.journeychristiannews.com. And remember, the Journey Christian newspaper, like our, our show, encourages Christians on their walk with Christ. And remember, our partnership is by having our ad on their website at the Summit Events, You can click on it and go to our website. And now I need to introduce my co-host, Laureen, who's sitting across from me here, as the word of the day and the topic which we're going to talk about is Don't Worry, Be Happy. Okay, Laureen. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. If you would like to read this whole passage, it's Matthew 6, 24 through 34. I will stop being perpetually uneasy, anxious, and worried about my life, what I shall eat or what I shall drink, or about my body, what I shall put on. Is not life greater in quality than food and the body far above and more excellent than clothing? I will not worry and be anxious, but I will seek aim at and strive after first of all the kingdom of God and his righteousness his way of doing and being right and then all these things taken together will be given to me besides we have learned that through our years it's uh, amazing what God has taught us and how he has brought us through so many things so many things that when I look back they seemed like we'll never get out of this how is this ever going to work out we thought we were uh, just so totally stuck uh, where we were but here we are (laughs) we are so far away from the problems that we used to have that what it teaches us is that you can trust God because he is faithful he is a God to be trusted and he will bring you through we're not completely free of the storms. All right? Those oh, you're were... never free of the storms. They're just different <laughs> storms. That's right. You know, sometimes there's rain, sometimes there's snow, sometimes there's hail. Most people would say, how in the world do you do it? The first thing you have to remember, we have faith in Jesus Christ. We say we have faith, but you have to practice it, and that's what we did running the organization for 30 years and not really worrying about you know where is the money going to come from we did that for so long until we got into this in the organization and realized you know you have to leave it to god because you can't worry that much about where your next meal is going to come from who's going to pay for the mortgage you you won't accomplish anything we would have never helped anybody else if that's what we had to worry about. Well, first of all, anybody who wasn't trusting God with what we were going through would not have started a foundation and taken on the responsibility of dying children in their families. Somebody in their right mind wouldn't do that. But (laughs) when you're trusting God, 
you don't think that way. All you do is see the need and know that he's going to provide for whatever you need to get along. And we just took one day at a time. And when we look at the cases that we had, and I, I hate to even call them cases because these families were very personal to us and the children were very personal to us. And uh, when we lost one, it was like losing our own. But we tried very hard not to lose one. God provided ways and we were even astonished how we were able to help these families, <laughs> that he would use us in that way. It was such a privilege. It really was. And you have to understand, during this period of time, we were pretty much financially distraught, you might say. You know, we then moved to the Orlando area. Jobs didn't really work out that well. And when they did, and we thought we were settled, boom, up pops this situation with kids who are sick and not getting the treatments and all. And who are we? We, we don't know anything about charity. First of all, what you're forgetting is that when we moved from Orlando, from Fort Lauderdale to Orlando, we were moving because we had lost our jobs. Yeah, oh, so right. we were trying to get our feet uh, on the ground and trying to make a way. But God said, no, I'm not going to wait for you to get settled. You're going to trust me through this. And that's when Compassion was born. Yes, and they took away my American Express card. <laughs> I remember that as it were yesterday. Well, let me tell you that little snippet here. We had to start this, this nonprofit organization because nobody was going to donate to us because we didn't have this status, so they couldn't take a tax deduction. When I say nobody, I'm talking about corporate America, you know, where the big bucks are supposed to be. I didn't have any money, didn't have anything, but I had an American Express card that I thought I could use, get an attorney, you know, file the papers, the whole bit. And son of a gun, back in those days, uh, I guess I went over the limit. We were going to a hotel or something. I don't remember what it was. He took my card in front of me, the, the clerk, and he cut it up. And I said, what are you doing? And he said, oh, they told me to take the card and cut it up. You're over the limit, is one day said. And that was over with. So that started this whole adventure of Compassion for Kids Being Born, or back in those days, Compassion Children's Foundation was the name. And that's how we started this ministry. But looking back, I don't think we would have done anything any differently. No. Everything that we did when it came to Compassion just seemed like breathing. It was a normal thing that had to be done. And you know, when you're, you're following God, it doesn't mean that the path is strewn with rose petals. You may find a lot of thorns along the way before you hit those roses. The fact is that as you're walking with God, He is there helping you through that you don't even realize the thorns. You know, we were trying to work and do this. You know, I was working and I do this during the day uh, until, you, you know, it, it's true, you know, you can't sit on a fence. You know, Christ says you can't, you can't be lukewarm. You can't sit on that fence. You've got to be one way or the other. Same thing with this. We wanted to help. We, we felt strongly about the mission. The, we were thinking, who's going to pay the bills? Oh, the rents do this, that. So we, I worked at night. So one morning coming home, you may have heard the story, I ended up in, in a pretty bad accident, almost a head-on collision, which put me out of commission. And that was it. You know, the working and the doing wasn't working at all. You can't serve two masters. I backed off. Well, I was, I was hurt. I, I couldn't go back to work to begin with. There was no money. That led us to compassion almost full time. What God did, see, we didn't plan and we weren't raising money for ourselves. We were raising money for the families and every penny went to the family's needs, period. And it's not just something we said. We didn't even take administrative costs. Not a thing. God said, no, you got to do this and I'm going to show you that I will help you. And we got this anonymous call one day. This guy asked me about, I don't know if you remember the story, if I checked my mailbox, that I should go see what's there. There was a check in the mail from this person who did not want to be known. And there was $10,000 for what I was doing. God brought that to me. I didn't solicit it. 
But I knew that God had my best interest or our best interest at heart. He always provided. You know, when you seek God first, He knows that you're serious. He knows that you're not double-minded, you're not sitting on the fence, you want what He wants. And when you're doing that, He's going to provide exactly what you need. How many times during Christmas, especially, we would go up to Shan's hospital and we would set up like a Christmas store there and the children would come in or the parents would come in and pick the toys for their children. We would wrap them. They didn't pay anything, of course, because these families were really stuck up there. They couldn't go home and neither did they have the money. Many of them didn't even have money to buy food because they were there so long. So we would go up and try to provide that for them. You have to realize that protocols for cancer treatment sometimes last months and these parents were sitting in a maybe Ronald McDonald house uh, somewhere up there away from home they came from throughout the, the northeast uh, and I think beyond even the south yeah mm -hmm. even in the south and, and this is where they were away from home at that time we tried to do what we could do for them and and this was one thing they felt badly about they couldn't get gifts for their kids so we offered this and it was always amazing to us because we would start with nothing and before you knew it we had tons of toys that we I mean cars would not accommodate them the uh, toy companies would donate and they came in from individuals that we had to get motorhomes to right. get, take yeah. our people plus the toys up there yep and we would get up there about 8 o'clock in the morning. We'd start out about 6 o'clock and get up there about 8 o'clock in the morning, set up decorations and set up the tables and, and just watch these beautiful young children come in that were so sick from the cancer. But they would come in and their faces would just brighten up because then what we started to do was put out things for, so that the kids could come in and pick for their parents that they would have gifts to give them. As we come to an end here to, to today's program, just, just remember that, folks. We're trying to tell you something that will benefit you because we've been there. And now, if you do have that pencil and paper handy, I'm going to give you the rest of the information that you need. Okay? So, if you want, contact us, livingwithvictory at gmail.com or through our website, at livingwithvictory.org, livingwithvictory.org. You can click on Contact Us, send a message. You can send a donation through there. You can write to us at P.O. Box 1982, Maggie Valley, North Carolina, and send a donation. Don't forget, listeners like you and friends are the only thing that supports us. And right now, we could use it. And Lorraine has started a mission and a project to get the word out to a lot of other women who have breast cancer, we're going to be giving away CDs of, of choice shows that she's made about her breast cancer. So we can use some help with that. And, and remember that this ministry comes strictly from the support of listeners like you. And I guess we have to start saying goodbye here because time is running out. So till next week, this is Tony and Laureen saying, you keep dancing in the rain. Don't worry, be happy because Jesus is your umbrella. Have a great day, folks, and we'll see you next week. And hey, tell your friends. You've been listening to Living with Victory with your host, motivational and inspirational speaker, Tony Giorgio. Support for Living with Victory comes from friends of compassion and listeners like you. Your tax-deductible donations can be sent to Compassion for Kids, P.O. Box 1982, Maggie Valley, North Carolina, 28751. Tony is also available to speak to your group or organization. You can call him at 828-926-4600. Join us again next week at this time for another uplifting story of Dancing in the Rain. Jesus is with me when the storm clouds gather. He's standing above my side.